Another story that rocked Canberra occurred in 1997 with the death of Joe Chinkwe. He was killed by his girlfriend, then a university law student, Anu Singh. She injected him with a massive dose of rehypnol and heroin. Those who attended a dinner party when he was drugged have gone on to lead normal and seemingly blameless lives. Many of them knew of her plans and none of them spoke up. The story has lived on through Helen Garner's book, The Consolation of Joe Chinkwe. In 2007, the Chinkwe family gave a rare television interview. For them, there's been little in the way of consolation. I was good at school, always been good at school. He played uh, tennis for a while, uh, but uh, he didn't go on because he, uh, he wanted to go to the university. He can't do the two things together. So. Uh, he went to university in four years, he became a civil engineer, which was good. We gave him a present, first on his 21st birthday, and then when he finished university, we, uh, we gave him a, the ticket to go overseas, plus some other money to spend. And he said he had the best year of his life. He went to uh, London, he worked for a while in London, at Greek Island, he went to Italy, uh, all around. Uh, Europe, um, then even in America, he one of his best friends was studying in America. Two, two months after he came back, he met the demon, I call the demon. And that was the end of him. That's the only mistake he made in his life. That's the only mistake he made in life. And he paid, paid out for that. And uh, he was happy. But we never imagined something whatsoever, never. We, when they come in here, all in love, kiss here, kiss over there. That's all what it was. That's all what it was. It was beautiful to see them together, happy, laughing. But he wasn't happy. I couldn't, I, you know, before all the photos you see, he was happy. After that, he never see him smile anymore, never laugh anymore. He never touch a cigarette, all of a sudden he started to smoke too. He was always upset, always uh, a lot of things on his head. I had at least uh, few, quite a few fights with her. She was just uh, very possessive, you know, just warned, uh, warned him. And I said to him, you end up that she, you're going to leave Newcastle, you're going to leave your family, she's going to want you down there. And that's exactly what happened. I never liked her, honest to God, I never liked her. I'm not saying this now. She never got a present from me. Then we chatted for nearly three years. Never got a present from me because there was something about her that I didn't trust her. Just, she tried too hard, and I knew there was something wrong there. She wasn't open. Joe moved to Canberra to be with his girlfriend. No one really knows what went on during their time together, but a year later, Anu Singh was actually planning to kill her boyfriend and herself using heroin. The setting, a send-off dinner party in their North Canberra home. It was a plan she shared with her closest friend and fellow law student, Madhavi Rao. Word of the bizarre plot soon spread among their university friends. Singh was even given heroin injecting lessons. The first failed attempt was five days before Joe Chinque's death on a Monday night. Then, on a Friday night in late October 1997, Singh held another dinner party. Some who knew about the plan came to her party. Nobody warned Joe Chinque. On that fateful Friday night, Anu Singh first drugged Joe Chinque with rehypnol and then injected him with lethal doses of heroin. However, he would not die until Sunday afternoon. They usually go away on the weekend. Sunday, uh, around that past five, six, I uh, thought I better give me a ring them. I'm sure they came back. And uh, when I rang, there was a, it was a policeman who rang me the, the phone. Meantime, the bell was... Yeah, and at the same time the, the bell rang, <laughs> there was another policeman from uh, the street come and tell us what happened. So the policeman go around the house and come in the back. When I see him, I say, well, what's going on? I say, Mr. Chingo, have a seat. 
My son didn't have a, uh, didn't die peaceful. That's what they say. You ever need to, you die. He didn't die like that. It took three days and then destroy all his inside. You are mad, you make that child. And you know what make you, make you feel? Your child being killed like that. And it's not an easy, easy way to die. Anu Singh and Madhavi Rao were charged with murder. On the morning Joe died, Rao, described by her counsel as a doormat, had visited Singh. She'd seen Joe lying unconscious in his bed, saw his lips were blue and his breathing laboured. She saw him and she left. Why you don't call the ambulance? Why you don't call the police when you see a person dying? Apparently she, she if you never see a dog bed. on the street, which the car accidentally catch him, you call somebody to help the bloody dog. It's a man dying, why well, don't call the ambulance? Also on that same morning, whilst Joe Chinkwe was dying, Madhavi Rao gave Anu Singh money for more heroin. You give the money and you let, you see him dying and you don't call nobody. Justice Ken Crispin decided to dismiss the jury, clearing the way for Singh and Madhavi Rao to be tried separately by judge alone, an option available in the ACT. We're still fighting. There was no, no justice for us. We felt really beat by uh, uh, Mr Crispin and, and the prosecutor and the law. The law is absolutely wrong. It's got to be changed. The law about, uh, first of all, the jury. The jury should be there. Because one person, it's easy to convince. Why there have to be two trials there? One for one girl, one for another girl. Why? They done the things together, should be charged together okay. with the trial. Justice Crispin found Anu Singh not guilty of murder, but guilty of manslaughter. In handing down Anu Singh's sentence, Justice Crispin said... At the time she committed the offence, the prisoner was suffering from an abnormality of mind that substantially impaired her mental responsibility for the acts which led to Mr Chinque's death. She served four years of a ten-year sentence and in that time finished her law degree and a master's in criminology. Are you happy to go home to your family today? Absolutely. Yeah. Madhavi Rao was cleared of all charges against her, including murder. At the Chinque's home in Newcastle, Joe's bedroom is largely untouched. You ask her, you get up in the morning. <laughs> it's not easy. You get up in the morning, you think, oh my God, another day, another day. What are we going to mm. do? If I don't do something wrong, it's not because I, I must give uh, by the law. I don't do it because my conscience told me not to do it. But I don't believe in the law anymore. I don't believe it, believe me. I wish, I wish my son was still here, that's all. I wish I could, uh, could say goodbye to him. According to Wikipedia, Singh has been writing her PhD thesis at the University of Sydney on offending women toward a greater understanding of female criminality. And Madhavi Rao, last heard of, was living in America, married with children. The journalist was Melissa Polamini, who won a regional Walkley Award for the story. She spoke to the Chinkways this week to ask their permission to rerun the story. A small consolation for them is the fact that the ACT Assembly has recently passed legislation, which means that judge-alone trials will no longer be an option for murder or manslaughter cases.